Hey y'all, it's me. I uh, had planned on doing a live on Sunday and he, would not, he was going to join me in that. And Sunday just kind of came and went. <laughs> Lots going on here. Um, so instead of that, and, and he also has hurt his shoulder. So he's just been uh, not feeling really, really wonderful. But I see a bag of trash over there. Um, but he's doing okay. He's doing okay. And uh, I think we're going to try to start doing a live on Sundays. But uh, things are going to be, I'm going to turn you around. Just a little bit different, um, and I wanted to let you know what's happening. All good, everything is good. We're just tired. <laughs> We're just just covered up right now, trying to get uh, this business off the ground. But it's good. It's going well. We had our first flowers with friends events on Saturday. Both of them. Um, did very, very well. I'm, I'm pleased with them. They were not what I hope they'll be later on in the summer, but for the first events, they were very nice. Now, I told y'all that I had some news to share with you, and, um, this will probably not come as a surprise to many of you, and I hope it won't disappoint any of you. But uh, Chelsea and I are going to change this channel a little bit from the encouragement circle. It's going to become Phoenix Acres Farm. And the reason for that, but I am going to have an encouragement circle day. Um, that is one thing that I, I feel very committed to, is that I want to have an encouragement circle day when we just kind of talk, when we just kind of walk and, and have a chat because I enjoy doing that and I know that some of you that have been with me for a long time that you enjoy that but the reason that we're going to change it to Phoenix Acres Farm is because that's what's consuming my life right now I really don't have time to put out any different content because <laughs> there's there's not any different content. Everything is about flowers. These are called Queenie. It's the Queenie series, Queenie Lime, Queenie Peach, Queenie Red. They're little bitty, but they're coming on. Some of them are pretty good size. So some of you, my geese heard me. Um, some of you who are my flower buddies or my gardening buddies, will probably like this and be happy to just join us on this journey. And some of you who just joined me for the little walks that we have may not appreciate that so much. And I do apologize. But um, I've been feeling just kind of really sad that I couldn't get anything out there that uh, wasn't just related to the gardening end of things. And so I decided, you know, at this point in my life, that's all my life really is about, is the gardening end of things. Hopefully this winter, I'll be able to, <clears throat> to start painting again. That's still in my, uh, my, on my radar. This, girls, if you're not familiar with it, as a, um, as a filler, it's lemon basil. And it smells like lemon. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful filler. I was really surprised. Very surprised at how wonderfully fragrant it is. But so if you, if you like growing cut flowers, grow a little patch of lemon basil to put in your, in your uh, flower arrangements. And just enjoy not only the beauty, but the smell. This is basil also, but it's called cinnamon basil. And it's equally beautiful and very aromatic. Actually, it's probably more beautiful. And it's very <laughs> strongly aromatic. And to begin with, I wasn't certain that I liked the smell. But uh, I do now. I do. I think it's a, 
it's a very unique very powerful smell but it's a it's a, a good clean smell but uh, anyway remember we talked about the living pathways I like this we have to keep them mowed and the weeds I need to bring my hoe and cut down the weeds that are kind of encroaching into the beds but I do like this it's late y'all I'm a little late to get to be down here trying to show you flowers I hope this will show up brightly enough these are azuratum and azuratum is actually one of my favorites um, they're they seem fairly fragile they get a little bit stronger and sturdier the the necks of them get a little um, more rigid but they're all different colors and we have a pretty good sized little bed of them but these little pops of purple and I have some white but they just show up really really pretty in a, a bouquet that's a lot of yellows I think it just makes the bouquet pop so these guys are coming along and as they they open up they just put out all these little little feather almost kind of like a dandelion type thing but they're just they're just very very pretty and then marigolds and a lot of people don't like the smell of a marigold I absolutely adore the smell of a marigold these little yellow ones are probably my favorite and they get bigger you can see that one down there he's short but he's pretty good size and we have yellow ones just intensely bright yellow ones and there's lots and lots coming on we've we cut pretty heavy today because we needed to make a delivery today and then tomorrow we'll make another delivery but look how pretty that just just sweet soft yellow is but um, they'll continue coming on we're getting ready to set out um, a color called you see cocoa gold and so it'll be a nice color for later on in the in the fall so but as you can see you know we've got a pretty good little little row of these so there'll be plenty coming on for a while hopefully the others will be ready before these are exhausted that's what we keep hoping you know our our zinnias we've got a nice long bed of zinnias and we're hoping that this bed right here, I'm moving kind of fast, sorry guys, that goes way down there, will be up tall and producing by the time the zinnias are exhausted, this row. But our problem has been our sunflowers, and I'll go down you, you can see hopefully in this very late evening that we've exhausted one really long row and the row behind it and we really don't have any ready to give us any blossoms I think we must have missed a week because we're trying to get them out every week in a succession and I think at some point when things were just really really busy that we forgot a week so we may not have any sunflowers for a week or so and that will be sad but these guys are crazy. I call them Martian brains. <laughs> oh, come on, camera, focus. All right. These are the Celosia, and it's a bloom called Coxcomb. But um, I don't know that I'm really a fan of them. I think that I actually like the feathers better. And if we can get down there in time before the <clears throat> the sun just totally uh, abandons us, I'll show you the little feathers. Some of you that have been with me for a while, you'll remember the feathers from from last year. Some that I I had in um, an arrangement with my windowsill. I just loved them. I probably gushed a little bit about them. And this right here, there's in that one, in that row, there's. Let me see, Gumfrina, and, hmm, I don't remember. I'll have to look at them in the daytime. But we're trying to stay ahead 
with the sunflowers. So you can see we've got one little blip down there in the middle that's trying to bloom, but they're kind of weird. And then over there on that end, I'm going to stick just totally with um, the color called, hmm, it's the Pro Cut Orange. It's actually, I don't know why they call it orange, because it is actually very yellow, very, very yellow. But you can see these. These are some that we direct sewed. And we've got this little, this little bird netting on it. And we've got it staked down on the edge so that it doesn't get tangled up in any of our little wild animal friends. I don't want my little wild animal friends eating them. But we're trying to also protect them. And we've in this row, we've got sunflowers at all heights. But you can see these are just... Hmm, not about hip high, but they are still tightly closed. They are nowhere ready to open and start giving us blooms. And they just need to hurry up because I need the sunflowers. Hurry up, you guys. All right. And then that row right there, we just planted those a couple of days ago. And they're netted over, so they're good. And then down... We've got this garden, it's just, it's not, um, it's not being planted in any sequence right now. It's just like, oh, that looks like a good row, let's do that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> but down there toward the bottom, we have another row that's um, seed that we direct planted and are direct sowed. And they're up about three inches and they look really nice. And then we have a row of whatever whatever I don't remember what we planted over there I think some more lemon basil and maybe some more celosia but let me take you back here and show you these pretty little gumfrina but they're stunted they're the ones that we got out too early so they'll be pretty in the little jars if you remember I don't know if you've seen the little jars that we're doing they're just little mason jars and this row I really need to get in and pull some weeds. The um, the sunflowers themselves were really sporadic. If you remember, we were having problems with groundhogs eating things. Little stinky boogers. And so I almost abandoned that whole patch. But there's still little areas of it that's coming on nicely enough that I need to just move the weeds out of there and give them some space. All right, here's some of the little celosia feathers. And I think they are so, so sweet. I love these little dudes. But, uh, and then, that's probably my favorite of the celosia. And here's some coming on. And this one is gonna be a purple when it gets a little bigger. So when it comes on, it's also a feather, but uh, it'll be a, a darker purple feather. But I love these little pale pink ones. They're so pretty. But there's nothing in that bed. And there's really not anything in this bed. Just a sporadic little sunflower here and there. And a little row of buckwheat down the other side that hasn't been mowed yet. But then that bed over there, there's nothing in it. So I need to just clean the weeds out of that. And then I can stick something in it. This, I don't know if you can see it as dark as it is, but it's called Frosted Explosion. Uh, you'll have to see this in the daytime. But it's a, it's a, a flower, or it's a, a grass, that actually, it, it is really kind of sparkly in the, in the sunlight. It's really pretty. And I'll bring you guys down and show, show it to you in a better light. But uh, it's kind of cool. I didn't know whether I would like it for certain or not, but it's it's turning out to be a, a really pretty little little addition. Something unexpected in a flower arrangement. And then here's some of the little gumfrina. They're just short, but they are so very pretty. I'm hoping they'll just continue getting some height. And I think they will. Those things up there, if you remember, even though I got them out really early, they just shot up unbelievably 
And the Cosmo, I didn't even stop at the Cosmo, down at the end, they're really as tall as my waist. I mean, they're really way up there. Now see, these sunnies are hmm, way up past my waist, but they're still not, still not opening up. When you start seeing just a little bit of yellow right in the center, which I'm not, no yellow in there yet, but when we start seeing the yellow, it's usually not but a, no yellow, not but a, a week or so and they start opening for us. So this little patch right here will probably be ready, I'm hoping by next week. So I'll just be without sunnies for, for one week. And I guess that's okay. This whole thing is just a learning curve. And these, all of these that are actually still uh, opened up, we've left some suns in the field for, some of them you can see were deformed or bug eaten. If you don't get them as soon as they start opening up, the bugs love to eat them. So we found out we have to get them quickly, very, very quickly. And, um, but we've left them for the bees and the butterflies and all of our little beneficial dudes. But see, this one is much more open than, than I like to leave them in the field. But uh, it's done that since this morning. And that one's even more open than I like to leave it before I, before I get them cut. But anyway, this field will be cut off completely in about hmm, as soon as that little middle section that I showed you as soon as it's finished it will be mowed down and replanted in something and this or for this field this uh, row and this row right here it's finished so it's got to be completely cut to the ground and I'm not sure whether I'm going to have Hugh go ahead and rotivate it in or whether I'm just going to put compost over it and use that, that thing with the, the tongs that you stand on and kind of lean back and just go through and just loosen the soil. Haven't decided completely. But anyway. Well, I'm surprised at how much light this camera is actually giving this screen because it's much darker out here than it looks on the screen. So it's it's really just it's really just picking up every little bit of light. Do you see the the fireflies? See, that's one of my favorite things to be in the garden late. I just love to watch the fireflies. And over across the road at Chelsea's against her woods. Well, you can see even down here in the in the field. Watch them start. Just a little fireflies everywhere. But over there against that, that row of trees, the fireflies just, they're breathtaking. They are so pretty. But anyway, to reiterate, for right now, while we watch the fireflies sparkle, um, because because life has become, they're down here in the weeds, uh, has become about gardening, about flower farming. The channel is just going to be there. Did you see him? Just going to be called Phoenix Acres Farm, and it's not going to be a learning channel so much. I will be sharing some of the things that we're learning as we go because there's, you know, we're, this is, this is truly a learning curve, even though you know, I'm 63 years old and I feel like I've been gardening most of my adulthood. Um, I'm still learning so much about growing the flowers, but, uh, we also have a big garden up there in that field with uh, everything from potatoes and corn to watermelons and cantaloupe and just a little bit of all the the normal we don't grow a lot of exotic vegetables but we grow all the the normals all the normies do you see the little 
pops of light. I love them, love them. But anyway, I hope that you all will just stick with us and just, um, we'll be putting out more content because Chelsea will be helping me with that. And because we spend so much time doing what we're doing, it'd be easier just to set up a little tripod and, um, let y'all just, um, or ask y'all, that those of you that are interested, to join us on this journey of um, this new little business. And it is a passion with me. I love it. I hear a duck down in the stream. They're so funny. They're sweet little sounds. I don't know if you can hear them or not. It's just a, it's just a sweet little squeaky sound. And sometimes the sound they make is very diabolical. <laughs> I said, you know, if someone was out by themselves and they heard that 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 very strange sound that they make sometimes, they would uh, it probably be a little bit worrisome. But anyway, I love the sounds of the night. And the quiet of the night. But anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful, beautiful rest of your week. I'm glad it's um, early on in the week because toward the end of the week, Thursday is our market day. And then Saturday is two Flowers with Friends events. And eventually, within the next few weeks, perhaps... We'll be having a Flowers with Friends event here on Fridays. So the weekend is just kind of grueling. Yesterday was lovely because I just uh, napped off and on. <laughs> I, I did my, my chores that I needed to do just in between little naps. But it was, it was good. Okay, well, y'all, those of you that have been with me on the encouragement circle... For the past year and a half you know I love you much and I hope you'll continue um, tagging along with me or joining me or just kind of fussing at me or encouraging me <laughs> on this this crazy journey that um, that we've decided to undertake who who actually decides to start flower farming at 63 years of age that's just kind of a a question that somebody needs to answer for me because it is extraordinarily physical, a lot of work. But you have to either be just a little touched, as they call it around here, a little touched, or it has to be a passion. And with me, maybe it's a bit of both. Look at the yellow roses. They're still just blooming their heart out. That one's all pretty much finished and our porch is glowing where I have my plants for right now but this is I don't know I told you I said well maybe this will keep me young <laughs> not that I'm young by any stretch of the imagination but Maybe just all the, the physical, because when you're doing something like this, you can't, I mean, it's not even like vegetable gardening. Because with vegetables, if you're not ready to cut a tomato or a green pepper, you can usually get by with leaving it on the vine for a few more days. With the flower farming, nope. When the flower is ready to be cut, you either get it when it's ready or it's wasted. As far as the cut flower, it's beautiful in the field. And all of the, the little insects and the bees and the butterflies love it. But if you want it for uh, an income, you better get it when it's ready. Or you've lost your opportunity. Alright, y'all. <laughs> I think it's dark and I'm going to go in and water my plants on the porch. And I'm going to call it enough for this evening and I love you much. Bye-bye.